shot my first velvet white tail. Stuck. Got it. It's the one with the split G2 and the split G3. What's up everyone? So on today's video, I'm going to be running you through all of my gear that I use for self-filming my deer hunts. I'm going to be showing you here exactly what I use, how I use it, all that good stuff. And then we're going to be heading out to the yard. I'm going to have a stand set up and show you exactly how I have it set up in the stands and just set everything up. So with that, uh, let's jump right into today's video. All right, so first I'm gonna show you my camera arm that I use. So I use a muddy camera arm and camera base. Um, I think it's the muddy Pro, something like that. I don't know, it's old, I've had it for a long time. But this is the, but this is the base, so it's pretty simple. This part is what hooks up to the tree. And then I stick my camera arm in here like that and then that can swing out and that's how I actually put my camera in the tree. Um, you see I kind of have everything here wrapped with hockey tape and that's just to make it quieter. These are a little loud. Um, I even have the ratchet strap wrapped in hockey tape. If you do have a muddy camera arm, um, they come with a ratchet strap. I would recommend getting this muddy, it's like a silent strap I think it's called, but it just pulls tight and it's real nice and way more quiet. Um, but yeah, so that's the camera base. And with the camera arm, big things with the camera arms, having a fluid head is, makes things a million times easier, obviously. And then the number one thing that makes my life easier for self-filming is this Verizoom. And what this does is this right here plugs into my camera and I'm able to control everything with this right here. And so I'm able to zoom in, zoom out. I can control my focus, my record. Um, it's real nice when you're recording this right here is a red light that's on so you don't have to be worrying if you're recording or not you can just kind of glance at that and that way I can have this in my hand on the right side of me with my bow in my left hand holding my bow controlling where I'm zooming and everything like that and I can quickly let go clip on and go to shoot I'll show you that all when I get into this tree here um, but this Vera zoom you just type them into Google B and H photo and just type in bear zoom. This is a stealth zoom by bear zoom. I want to say they're like a hundred or so bucks, um, but they make a world of a difference. And then if I'm hunting from the ground, I like to use a tripod. And so I've got this Manfrotto tripod right here. Uh, I've got the bottom wrapped in camo. Um, then you got a fluid head on here too. Um, so yeah, tripods you can go so many ways with. This one isn't overly heavy duty but it definitely gets the job done and it can extend twice and get to be right there it's on the ground and it's above my head when I'm sitting anyway but it's pretty tall and uh said this is a Manfrotto tripod I'm not sure the exact model but uh just kind of do a little bit of research but these tripods work very well and then as far as my main camera is concerned I've got a Canon G30, and I don't even believe they make Canon G30s anymore. I think you would have to look up for a Canon G40. Um, but this camera, I really like for self-filming. Um, it's got a flip-out screen right here, so you can see. Um, it zooms in. I don't know what the exact optical zoom is. I want to say it's 20 times, but... Uh, it's really, it, zo it does, I mean, what's, what does it say here? Yeah, 20 times optical zoom. Um, you can zoom in quite a ways. The screen's nice and bright. You can, I put this in full manual settings, but you can have it in manual settings to control your exposure and all that good stuff. Um, or you can record in manual too. Or excuse me, or you can record in auto as well. Um, so this Canon G30, it's nice and lightweight. It's pretty slim, so I can just throw this in my backpack. Um, and it works really great as my main my main hunting camera. Pretty much the only thing I use this camera for is actually filming my hunts um, as my main camera. And then I run a Rode shotgun mic on the top of it. Um, this shotgun mic just plugs into the side here. Um, and you have an on and off switch right here, just like that. So usually 
I have this off while I'm sitting in the while I'm just sitting in the stand. If I see something, I'll flip it on. Um, it does make a little noise. I don't know if you can hear that. So when it gets to be the last half hour, if I'm in the morning hunt and it's the first half hour hour of the day, this has got really good battery life. So I just I flip it on and just leave it on. That way I don't have to think about it. Um, it takes a it takes a nine volt battery and it lasts quite some time. Um, I think I've had this for a couple of years and I've only put in a couple batteries. So it definitely lasts quite some time. But yeah, Canon G30, um, great camera. I think these run, well the Canon G40 now, I think it runs at around $1,000, $1,200 new. I actually got this used a few years ago and it's still doing the job just fine. And for a secondary angle, I always like to have a GoPro in the tree. So here I've just got a GoPro Hero Session 5. Um, just a little GoPro. Any GoPro really can do the trick. I also have a GoPro Hero 3 or 4 I think, but it just is junk and the quality of that camera is just really bad, so I don't really ever use that. But this is nice. Um, you can get you know the GoPro um, jaw clamp. I just typed into Amazon jaw clamp and got this. It's a Symmetry. Honestly, don't know what that brand is. But this thing was like 15 bucks, and so usually I'll just clip this to a branch up above me, or if there isn't any, I'll clip it to like my bow hanger or something where I can just get a second angle of what's going on. Um, you can connect this via Bluetooth to your phone and control it from that. Honestly, usually I have it somewhere where I can easily just press the button and not think about it and then let it do its thing. Um, so yeah, having a GoPro is very nice for a second angle, definitely like that. And then when I'm capturing like some B-roll type of stuff, uh, when I'm not actually in the stand, um, I've got a DJI Mavic Pro for a drone. This is really awesome. I just switched over to the Mavic Pro maybe a month ago. And it's just really nice because this thing's so small and folds up. You can throw it in your pack. Um, if you need to get any B-roll for a video, you know, make sure you know the laws where you're at because some states you can't use them during hunting season or you can't. Like in North Dakota, if you ran a drone somewhere, you weren't able to hunt there for 24 hours. But this is just nice and small. Folds out like that, just like such. And you just fold it back. And I've got a, just a little case where I just keep it attached to my camera bag. Very convenient. Um, and that's my drone. And then the other camera that I'm using is the one I'm filming with. And that is a Sony a7 III. Um, I'll go ahead and show you that here what that kind of looks like we're gonna go ahead and show you from this camera so i've got that this is a small rig cage right here um that just goes on to protect it um that way it just stays a little the body stays a little protected during season when i'm using it and i've got that on a jobby gorilla pod which is right here and so what i'm using the sony a7 what i'm using this guy for um during season is usually I have that just like clipped to me or have it on me and I'm using that to just capture b-roll while I'm sitting in the stand of leaves of you know maybe deer as they're passing by ones I know I'm not going to shoot stuff like that um, and, or as I'm walking into the stand anything where this camera captures my b-roll and it's also I use it for my still photography um, and it works really great I love the Sony a7 III there's a lot you can do with this camera um, it's a little expensive. The body runs about $2,000 and then lenses for it are pretty spendy, but there is a lot you can do with it. Um, it's a great camera for photography and then for video you can shoot 120 frames per second, which is slow-mo. Um, you can do a lot with it and uh, it's a great camera. So, And then on that I've got a Rode VideoMic Pro, I believe it's called, um, or Micro Pro. It's just another small shotgun mic. That I leave on that that way I can capture audio with that if need be and I have two sources of audio so that's pretty much all my camera gear I don't think I'm missing anything I've got the GoPro the main camera so these two are essentially my workhorses during a hunt along with the Sony I always put these in my backpack carry the Sony in with me um, the drone like I said is just for b-roll for you know maybe on days I'm not even hunting I'm just out capturing some footage um, then you got the camera arm, the camera base, and that's pretty much it. So now is what we're going to do is we're going to transition to the field. 
I'm gonna head out, set this up in my yard and show you exactly how I use it with my bow and everything all set up as of our hunting. So uh, let's get out there. all set up here and stand now in my yard and I'm going to start off by saying I apologize if you hear any background noise. This is the only day I could shoot this this week and it's a little windy and it sounds like a couple neighbors down are working on some stuff but we do with what we can. At least no neighbors are mowing today so that's good but just want to show you now exactly how I have everything set up in the tree. So I've got my stand here and this is a perfect case scenario. This isn't always going to work depending what kind of tree you're in. Um, other factors but I like to have my camera on my right so as I'm sitting down this is on my right bow is to my left we'll move this out a little bit this is how I like to be set up in a tree and then I got my GoPro here above me and so that way with this with my Vera zoom I can completely control my camera like this no matter what the deer comes boom I can see it beautifully I prefer to be sitting down in my tree stand as much as possible I like to have this about chest height and that way if I do need to stand, I can stand and it's still at a good height for me to control. Um, that way I can have this sitting right here to my right and now if a deer is coming, I can still be controlling this camera with the, with the ver zoom. I can see exactly what's going on and now if a buck's approaching or something, what I like to do is I just, alright, we're going to backtrack a couple steps. If I see a deer, no matter what, if I hear something, I see a deer, I usually just, boom, hit the GoPro as fast as possible. That way I'm not trying to mess around with that if I got something real close to me. And then what I'll do, I usually grab my bow. So I have my bow kind of, in a perfect world, I'll have it just kind of resting on my lap. I can control my camera right here, and I can get all set up. So if a deer is coming, all right, here he comes, here he comes. Now I'm gonna try, the biggest thing when self-filming is the hardest part for someone is if you get it in frame, then you gotta take a couple moments to draw back and get a shot. And a lot of times in that moment is when the deer will walk out of frame. And so you'll notice like earlier this year on a September hunt in North Dakota, I had a buck come in, he was in frame. I drew back, I looked at the camera, saw he walked out of frame. So then I let down because I was very confident in my chances of still shooting him. What you wanna do when it comes to the actual moment of shooting the deer is lead the deer. And so if he's coming and say he's walking this way, I'm, I'm on him, I've got my B-roll, and now I'm gonna move the camera to where he'll walk into frame, clip on, pull back, and, and I like the screen here because I can be looking, all right, he's in frame, get the shot off. And this is for a lot of other cases. I mean, if you got a deer over here, you get turned around in your tree, like this, you can see, no matter where you're at, when you have this camera to your right and the screen out, and your bow in your left hand, you can control, you can be moving around, seeing what's going on, and being able to get a shot off. And that's the biggest thing for me. And so really that's how I self-film my hunts. I've got my camera on here. I didn't show you guys setting it all up. It's almost impossible for me to film that by myself, but we got it right here. Now the only bummer is the way I like to set it up is oftentimes, I don't know if you can see here, this is where the buckle is, so it can be right on your back. I don't mind it. I just kind of deal with it. Um, but yeah, you got your camera arm here, got the camera on it, GoPro above you, bow to your left, and uh, this is my setup, this is how I love to do it. If there's an opportunity to set up a stand like this in a tree, this is how I'm going to do it. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, I'll, uh, I'd like to answer any of them that you got. Self-filming, no doubt, is a challenge, it's very hard, especially to get a shot on kill. I mean, I'm not gonna let not getting a shot on camera ruin a hunt. If it happens where I have to get all contorted or a buck comes out of nowhere during the rut and I try to get on him and I don't, that is what it is. It's what it's self-filming really comes down to. And um, it's much harder than, you know, I think it's much harder than filming with another person. Yeah, you have to conceal two people up in a tree when you have a cameraman, but I like doing that better if possible. This year, I think I'm gonna be doing a couple hunts with some guys and have a cameraman with me a little bit, but uh, 
it's how you do it. I mean, it's not easy. It can be a grind. It takes a long time to get set up in a tree, especially if you're hanging and hunting. Um, later this summer, I'm gonna do a four part series on how I do mobile hunting from everything to what I use, to how I get set up in the tree with the camera here, to how I take it down, um, run you through the very fine details on everything. But when it comes to self-filming, this is how I do it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, good luck to this fall, to those of you that do self-film or you're just getting into it. And uh, that's gonna bring the end of this video. So I will see you on the next video, coming very soon. I missed, I'm trying to hit the lens. I'll see you next time.